there, Vero311 here. I have my friend Ben. He is a gun stalker, and he is uh, knows a lot about the American long rifle, and he thought he would come out here and share the secondary sources that he uses to get his information. Um, this channel very much supports that sort of stuff. So, Ben, if you want to take it from here, talk about the sources, and uh, give, you, give us a review of the books that you have found useful, um, and some books, just basically rate the books. Okay, so it depends really on what you're wanting to study on. Um, here in America, you tend to see a really big focus on the American long rifle, obviously. So I'm going to start with probably the essential books to start off with when you're looking at early American rifles. And that is the Rifles of Colonial America books by uh, Shimonway, uh, George Shimonway. Um, this is actually the repaint reprint and it is in color of the first edition excuse me the first volume um, here is the first volume in black and white if you can find them buy them they're pretty rare but they are as far as photographs photographic sources go they're the best that you can possibly find Shimon Way also has some other books um, one of his others that I have down here is the George Schroer and Gunmakers of York, Pennsylvania. He does one on Lancaster too, I believe, and does one on the Golden Age, the Long Rifle. So any of those that you find, and it all determines on the time and area that you want to study in Long Rifle culture, for sure get it. Um, like I said, or if you've watched our earlier videos, and I'm from North Carolina, so I focus a lot on North Carolina guns. Uh, the series by Michael Briggs on North Carolina Long Rifles is phenomenal. This one in particular is the Mecklenburg Long Rifle School because that's the first one I could find. But they he has one on the Rowan School, Salem Schools. Pretty much, to my knowledge, every school of the American Long Rifle in North Carolina from the 1750s to about 1865. Are, are these colored photos as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. These are, these are really nice oh, colored wow, photos. Um, you know... Briggs is a phenomenal fella. I've met him a couple times, and he owns a lot of these rifles, so he gets up close and personal, puts really good measurements. As does Shimonway. Shimonway works really close with a lot of the collectors that own these, and I've got to admit, these this new colorized version, I mean, it throws some absolutely gorgeous pictures. It really does. Wow. And though, and you know, and it now has some more additional information of the guns that were not in the originals because I, I mean they just. That information hadn't come up yet. Um, if you want to study stuff a little bit earlier on the French and Indian War period, not that this doesn't have some French and Indian War stuff in it, but this really focuses on it is of sorts of provincials. Um, this one is the American, there is a British version. And it gives really, again, really good in color pictures and really good information of the rifles that were used in the Americas in the French and Indian War. And these these books are not just for the general knowledge. If you are a collector of historic firearms, you need to own not maybe these specific books, but books that cover it. And books that can do it in complete color are just an say, absolute godsend. Say, uh, I, I've got to say this about the Long Rifle community. They have always done their research, and these books are, are really good evidence of this. And this you know, surround, surrounding long rifle cultures with horns, with knives, with axes. There are books that are as good quality of these in all those areas. So for how much would these kind of books cost you? Are they accused to buy these off of Amazon? I feel like I've seen the Provincial book on the, Amazon. The, the, the source of Provincials yeah. is pretty common. These rare, these rare um, Rifles of Colonial America books, the older ones... I've seen sets go for as much as six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Now the in color one, you can buy it from. If I'm not mistaken, you can buy it from uh, Crazy Fair Trading Post for a hundred and sixty. I bought mine from Muzzleloader Magazine for a hundred and sixty dollars. And I, be honest, I'm going to push you to go towards them because all their money goes back into the long rifle and to the historical arms culture. That's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, Again, another great book, and these these uh, this one isn't in color, but has absolutely gorgeous pictures and first-hand accounts and sources, is the American Fowler's book, and it focuses on Fowler's, which are smoothbore, equivalent to your shotguns, 
it focuses on those pretty much in New England, Pennsylvania area, and it's, you know, there were different styles of Fowlers, just like there were different styles of rifles. Um, I'm going to skip over this and hit this one last. The other two are both by DeWitt Bailey, and these are actually, these are some of my favorite books of all time. Um, this one is on British small arms in general, so it covers your brown vest muskets, it covers some of your earlier rifles that were used in the Americas in the, in the 18th and early 19th centuries. Um, again, not in color pictures, but as far as research goes, these are your most researched out of all of these. You know, Bailey did remarkable work in these. You know, he went to the Tower Arsenal. This was his PhD thesis. You know, he's I mean, also a member of the American Society of Arms Collectors as well. Yes, he is, and he and Dwight Bailey is from everybody I know who's met him is is just a remarkable human being. But he is he has put his work into these, and they are just stupid good books. Like I said, this one is is specifically on small arms, so it covers. Uh, the brown vest muskets from, I think, the model, the 1730 model, all the way up to the India pattern, which was the last pattern. Um, it covers some of your British rifles from 1776 rifle to Baker. I think that was third pattern Baker, which was used in 1815 here in, here in the War of 1812. So, you know, that covers that. And obviously, you have, have the small arms, you got to focus on the rifles. Um, this one is the British Flintlock rifles from you know, 1740 to 1840. Now these are just strictly flintlocks. And it covers from the pattern 76, 1776, the German version, all the way to, I think the Brunswick rifles, the first one of those that were flintlock. And again, remarkable research, pictures from the tower arsenal. He took trips to London and did this book. And it is, as far as British firearms or British military rifles go, this is the go-to book at present. And with your secondary sources, of course, you do have to have your first, first-hand sources. This is the uh, memoirs of Bennett, excuse me, uh, Bennett Cuthbertson, and he was a Revolutionary War soldier. And he, from him, you can get not only some some descriptions of clothing and kit, but of certain firearms, certain weapons that were being used during the revolution. That's awesome. And I will have a, in the description down below, I will um, provide the bibliography for all of these books so you can know where, what they are. And then we'll, where do you think the best places to find them? Do you have any recommendations Amazon should provide? I know I've bought the DeWitt Bailey book off Amazon. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have any other recommendations to like, find these books? Like I said, for the In Color Rifles Colonial America, um, you'll hear us refer to with us RCA from time to time. I am going to push you to go to Muzzleloader Magazine just simply because of their contribution to the long rifle culture and to the historical arms culture, uh, historical arms community. You can find it other places. As far as the older versions of that, finding those are a little bit harder. I see them on eBay every now and then. Um, I see them at gun shows every now and then. I'll be honest, probably your surefire way of going to find them is going to places like the CLA show, the Kentucky Long Rifle shows, uh, put on by the KRA, the Kempton Gun Makers Fair. You know, you have those shows that are set up around flintlock gun building, around flintlocks, and around muzzle loaders that most of these books are going to pop up at. Now, and speaking from my own experience, uh, I've looked at auctions, online auctions as well. And if you are going to get into collecting, or if you're going to get into historic firearms, uh, it's the pro the having these books is just so needed. You cannot rely on the internet. If you try no, to you really if you can. try to go off a of muzzle loading forums, you're gonna be uh, in a you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Well, and, and <laughs> in I'll, general, I'll say, I will say something for the muzzle loading for, muzzle loading forums. Muzzle loading forums are good places to start, but you always need to have the evidence to back up what you say, and that's where these come in. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Do you have any closing thoughts or if you if you do get into rifle building, rifle collecting, muzzle loader collect or just collecting in general, please do your research because you don't want to buy things that are fake or you don't want to buy things that you think are what you're buying and they're not. So, you know, always buy your resources, always do that research.
Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you for coming on today. I really appreciate you for bringing these books. Like I said, we'll link them down in the description down below. Until next time, like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. Thank you so much and take care. Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's a video. <laughs>